have a collect call from an inmate at the Washington Correctional Center. To accept the call, press 5. There's nothing like waking up to the sound of clacking and buzzing as the doors crack in the morning after count clears. Waking up to the reality of life in prison. For some, it is just a stop along their journey, a milepost, an experience. For others, it is a revolving door, in and out, in and out, and that's their way of life, stuck in the cycle, pulling and eating away at them. And then for some, it becomes their destination as the hammer came down and that judge issued him a death sentence. The slow way, by way of life in prison. This is The Life of a Lifer, by Taylor Conley. Keep on walking down the line. Keep on walking. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Life of a Lifer. My name is Salty Candace. Today, we are talking with Bobby Bostich, a 41-year-old man that was convicted at the age of 16 who is serving a sentence of 241 years in Missouri. He was given a sentence of 241 years by Judge Evelyn Baker, making him eligible for parole when he is 112. Bobby is serving the longest sentence in Missouri given to a juvenile for a non-homicide offense. Bobby's case attracted considerable media attention in later years due to changing laws regarding life sentences for children and the severity of his sentences. Judge Baker later stated she regretted giving Bobby the sentence and actively supported his appeal to the Supreme Court of the United States, along with Ken Starr, Sally Yates, Donald B. Verrill, Jr., and over 100 current and former judges, prosecutors, and law enforcement officers. In April 2018, the Supreme Court denied Bostick's appeal. He is incarcerated at Jefferson City Correctional Center. During his first year in the Department of Corrections, Bobby obtained his GED. Since then, he has obtained a paralegal diploma and has taken victim's advocate course, courses through Adams State College. He has also completed a course in nonprofit management and grantship. He has established several several blueprints for nonprofit organizations for troubled teens and charities. Bobby has also written 15 books. Nine of them are books of poetry and completed over 25 rehabilitation classes. Hello, Bobby. Thank you for joining us today. We are happy to have you here on Life of a Lifer. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. This doing is okay? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I understand that you've written 15 books. Can you tell our listeners what they're about and why you wrote them? Uh, okay, one of them is called uh, Dear Mother. It's my mother life story. That's available on Amazon right now. And uh, other books, uh, two of them are about prisoners and growing up in prison. And one of the other books is about the younger generation and why they turned out the way they did and why they think the way they do and why they rebelled against the world. And the other book is on memoir, and the last book is about living in the inner city in the ghetto, and the other nine books are poetry books. Wow, that and is like, incredible. Like I was, and I was telling, like I was telling you, one of them is about on Amazon. That's the big mother book. That's my mother's life story. Very cool. And that one's on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel that writing has helped you cope with your sentence? Yes, and it helps me. It helps me also find meaning in this existence or meaning in my life. Period. The mistakes I made through writing. Uh, I use writing as a form of therapy, and it helps others. You know, to see through my mistakes and our mistakes in general. So writing has helped me cope a lot in it. Exactly. Can you share with us how it has been to you growing up in prison? Growing up in prison, I say it has been a hard experience. But I can also say that growing up in poverty kind of prepared me for these hardships because had I not gone through my rough childhood, I don't think I'd have been able to deal with my prison sentence or existing prison 25 years I've been here. So 
But growing up here has, has been hard, but also I look I look at it as it's been a learning thing, and I learned my lesson in life, and I found my talents and gifts in prison. So I use it to the best of my ability. Right, right. Is there anything that our listeners can do to help with your case? Uh, well, uh, check me the way they can log on to a uh, uh, free uh, body by stick and look on there and see if uh, anything they can do. They can look, to, look at freebodybossy.com and see if anything on there that help them help me to sign my petition on change.org. They can uh, get that link off the website. And that's it. They can just try to help uh, write letters of support to me, write me letters of support to have my attorneys, or just write me letters of support to keep me encouraged. Right, right. Definitely. Would you be able to read one of your poems for us? Oh, okay. Um, well, I'll read one off the top of my head. This one here is called The Terrible Bullet. It's a poem that I wrote several, I wrote this probably like in 04, but it's relevant to what's going on today with, you know, the unnecessary mass shootings that we see on the news all the time. So this poem I'm going to read now is called The Terrible Bullet by Bobby Bostick. Bullet, can I ask you a question? Why are you so terrible? In the wake of your onslaught, things turn horrible. See how you rip through bodies and kill so many dreams. There's a ripple from the trigger and send bloods flowing in streams. Made by man, but yet given the life of your own. You are not the solution because you break up many a happy home. People dealing with problems thinking that you can solve them. Yet in the end, you become the greatest problem. Look at the damage that you do to the world, taking the lives of innocent boys and girls. Oh, Bullet, they say that you know no name, but yet in life you play such a deadly game. You have no eyes, so therefore you cannot see, blind to the fact that you are killing off humanity. I wonder if you knew your crimes, would you repent? And if so, would you claim that the deaths you caused wasn't meant? Will you just blame man and absolve yourself of guilt, wrapping your conscience up in an unmerciful quilt? Nothing but a piece of steel, yet your fatal consequences are so real. I must ask those that have emotions that feel, why has the bullet been given the power to kill? Not even knowing those whom it may slay, yet those precious lives will not live to see another day. Recently, I read about the child that was shot and killed. I guess they had to go because this is what heaven will. You do not realize that the life you took was that of a kid, but yet you are so unsympathetic in what you did. Almighty oh, Bullet, let me ask you another question, because every day your daily deeds be having me guessing. I wonder at your worth, but I can't still figure you out. Death and destruction is what you are all about. Look at how you tore through that woman's heart, ripping her whole family apart. Then you have these greedy business men that become a gun dealer. Them as well as the trigger man is the real killer. Look at the precious soul that you have forsaken. You have become the favorite tool of Satan. Iron is supposed to be a precious metal, but yet it is used for the wrong purposes by the devil. He destroys the souls that he possesses. Even the killer kills a part of themselves in the process. So, Bullet, who do you answer to? Is destruction the only way that you pay your due? All it takes is a pull of the trigger to unleash your fury. Setting down all the factors that make the bullets will be the best theory. Because a lifeless bullet can take on a life of its own. Once released into the earth, it is terror prone. A bullet travels at the speed of light. All it takes is one bullet to end the life. Causing grief and destroying so much. A lot of habit can be reaped from a bullet's touch. Man finishes the trigger, and then he pulls it. Little does he realize the endless consequences of the terrible bullet. Bye, Bobby Boston. That is an amazing poem, and that was just off the top of your head. <laughs> yeah. From memory. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Very moving. It's just, it's just awesome. dedicated to all the senseless violence that's going on out there. 
And I got a, that's my gift. That's why I said uh, writing is another gift. I can write almost anything from a deep emotional place. And it's just my gift. And I want to touch the world with that gift. I write to heal. I write to help people. And I write inspiration things so that people know whatever they're going through, they can get through. Because, you know, like going through my sentence, I, I see the end of the light now. You know, like, it's a lot happening. Like the judge who sentenced me she just had a press conference up in the capital of Jeff City the other day, hiring a lot of legislators. And they're going to change the law of Missouri based on my case. You know? So, but I never saw that coming years ago, but I always believed that I was going to get out one day. So, anybody in prison, or people that have loved ones in prison, please tell uh, your family to keep hope because it's a way to get out of the worst situation. And we can make the best, we can turn tragedy into triumph. We can make the best out of bad things happen in life. Exactly. And exactly. my story is a, t- it's a testament to that. And, you know, anybody that's going through something, we just got to stay strong. Mm-hmm. And we can't change. People here make the worst mistakes, but I wrote another essay called Some of the World's Greatest Minds Are in Prison because we are here. It's just we made some of the worst mistakes. You know, we made some of the smartest people do the dumbest things, and we end up inside these prisons. But we can turn this around if we just use our mind and become better people. And that's what people like me have done. And the people that you that you all promote through this through this uh, medium here, y'all promote prisons that have changed their life. And that's what we trying to do. We trying to help other people to not make mistakes from that. Right, right, well, definitely. Now, if you could sit a young person down and give them heart to heart advice, if they were out there getting in trouble. What would you say to that young person to hopefully change their mind? Uh, that, that young person, I would tell them, I, I call. I got another, I always go back to my writings. I, I wrote an essay called Advice I Would Give to My Young Self. I'm telling my young self that he needs to listen to his mother. He needs to listen to his parents. Because he always thinks that he knows what's best for him, but he does You know, and it takes it take for you to really bump your head to see, but by then, sometimes it may be too late. And once you once it's too late, there's no finding no way out of it. Some things we can make mistakes and never come back from. So the young person, I would tell them, please listen to people that are telling you what they're trying to tell you because they got your best heart, especially your family, your mothers. They got your best advice for heart. You may not think that or you may think they don't know what they're talking about, but they do. And in reference mm-hmm. to, to me trying to give uh, young people guidance, right, uh, I have dedicated my life to... It was my story coming here at 16 to help young people change their life. And there's only so much I can do for prison, but from prison so far, I've uh, created an online platform for youngsters that may be getting in trouble or may be headed towards trouble. I created an online platform for them, right? And mm-hmm. that, pla- that platform is called Juvenile, Juvenile Lifers Without Parole Seats. Dot org. Okay, and yeah, they just to help them to go on there and, you know, use my testimony and me and a few of us, you and I, like, to keep them out of trouble. Like, these are 12 lessons that you usually get in trouble for. So I created 12 lessons on there to tell them to stay out of trouble. You know, the mm-hmm. main 12 aspects that keep them in trouble is all on there with lessons and homework on that, on that website that I created. Awesome. That's that is very cool. Oh, yeah, when you see it, you will really, whoever see it, they, they like it. There's drawings on there, and there's anything that you can relate to. So, they just the only thing, that's what I can do for her until I can get out and see her on face to face or, you know, things like that. I just want to right. make my story of the testimony. Right. Bobby, uh, I thank you for yeah. joining us today. We at Design okay. Conviction appreciate you taking the time to tell us your story and for sharing your poetry with us. We applaud you for your accomplishments, and we look forward to following your story, and we wish you luck with your case. Okay. Thank you for taking the time to hear me, and I hope that my message can encourage and All right. And uh, just to I appreciate everything that you're doing to help prisoners in general, and to me in particular. Keep on walking.